Numerous plaques set up by Ipe Chuligazulu to remember victims of the Gukura Hundi have been destroyed by alleged state security agents over the past year. The pressure group argues President Emerson Nangagwa's administration is not ready for honest talk on the matter. We took time to speak to Ipe Chuligazulu Secretary General Mbuso Fuzwayo, who questioned Mnangagwa's decision to engage chiefs in the Matebeleland regions on the matter, yet the National Peace and Reconciliation Commission was seized with it. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, uh, Mr. Mbuso Fuzwayo. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, a few questions I, I would like to ask, especially about uh, your organization and uh, the agendas which you have been pushing for since its inception. Probably first will be the issues which are uh, actually Azulu once addressed uh, in relation to the Kukura Hundi. Okay, uh, uh, as an organization on issues of Kukura Hundi, there are things that we expect to be done. Uh, we expect that first there has to be acknowledgement on the part of the government. But then uh, uh, after acknowledgement, there has to be truth telling. Because you can't say after killing over 20,000 people, uh, then there is no way people are kept in dark on what happened, why it happened, who did what. That is what is important for nation building. Uh, so as an organization, we expect that there is to be truth telling, uh, there is to be an impartial arbiter. Uh, we are against this thing whereby the perpetrator will come and be the jury. That you just say, uh, as a government, we want chiefs to lead this process where there is no legislation to say if the chiefs are leading this, where, 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 where are they getting the man mandate from? Yes, I, I, was, I was coming to that question and I wanted okay. uh, to get your view on. Uh, President Emerson Nagawa's decision to let chiefs lead this uh, uh, this process. Well, do you think it's the right step forward? Already you've shown that I uh, don't. No, uh, it's sad because uh, the state is the prime perpetrator. So citizens in 2010 during the constitution making, they said they, they need an independent commission to lead that, uh, which is a constitution. We have NPRC, which is a constitutional body. But overnight, we have Emerson, who is a key player in the commission of Iko Kuraund, uh, waking up, appointing, appointing people to positions, uh, 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 assigning chiefs to lead, uh, which is unconstitutional. They derive those powers from him. And when you look at everything that has happened around the, the chief's process, it is not even a government process because it's the chiefs from Mad South and Mad North minus the chiefs from Mickens. But if it was about Kukura Wound, it was going to say we want all the chiefs from the affected chief areas. But he has chosen to take chiefs from Mad South and Mad North and leave out chiefs from Mickens, which is affected as well. So it's sad because the perpetrator is now the one who has taken over. The process is the one who is saying who should be there, who should not be there. So I don't think uh, it is now victim center. It is now perpetrator led, and in which even the outcome will not reflect what the, the victim wants. And then do you trust chiefs that they can uh, probably move the, the, the points which people want or the issues which people want addressed? It's unfortunate because the one who says the agenda is the one who will get the, 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 the end, the outcome. So the chiefs are not sent by the victims. They are not sent by their people. They are sent by the perpetrator. So they represent the voice of the one. They might have their views that they want done in their chieftainships. But at the end of the day, the perpetrator is the one. If you have been following, he has always been issuing sentiments to say, uh, so it's more, it's more like he's guiding. He's the one who is saying, so and so must participate and in this manner. So it's sad because if it is like that, it is not addressing Kukura one, but it is trying by all means to create an impression that he is different from Mugabe. 
he has allowed people to talk about it, but his no his aim is not to address. No, it's not. And, and then um, your organization spends a lot of time within these affected communities. What is their proposed solution? A uh, on uh, on uh, Wednesday. Yes, on Wednesday I was in in, in one affected area. One one village said they want him they want him to come and tell them why they were killed people are clear in the villages that if if the environment is conducive they will say what they want and they are clear that he is a prime player and they still need answers why they were killed where are the people who were kidnapped who were taken and who cannot be accounted for so but because he has got the state power at the end of the day, the outcome will not be victim-centered. It will not be a true reflection of what communities aspire. But it will be something to deal with his egos so that in the international world, it creates an impression that he has uh, finally addressed the Kokora one. But certainly, it will not be, it will not be, it will have not done anything. And then the NPRC, has it done enough? No, the unfortunate thing is uh, the NPRC as a constitutional board was supposed to do things different. But if you are to look careful, they are micromanage. Uh, the executives micromanaging everything. So there is nothing to say the commission because constitutional issue will be independent is independent. It is not. Everything is being micromanaged by the office of the president. And then uh, the, with uh, the and the other thing with the commission, we have got characters like like Obed Good. Uh, honestly speaking, you can't expect anything to come out of a, a proper uh, a redress that can be led by people like Obed Good. Uh, it was days before uh, uh, he had joined the land, so that's why he was appointed. So PM is party deployees. So they can't address a, a, something that they created. If we are sincere as a nation, we need people who will not be representing the perpetrator. We don't need people who will be representing the victim, but we need neutral people, people who don't have a direct interest, but people who can assist in people finding a common ground, find, finding a lasting solution, which out of the commission that is micromanaged, which out of the chiefs that are being assigned by the perpetrator, you can't get that. Because if chiefs will act independent, obvious, one way or the other, either they will be victimized, or because of what he did with Chief Ndiwen, obvious, he will abuse his powers, as you heard him three weeks back or so, talking about that he uh, is the one who appoints chiefs, so he can dethrone them. So because of that, it's now clear that any chief who can work and work independently at, outside of his detects will always will be effective. And then uh, there is a complex matter which has been uh, discussed over the past weeks, that uh, since since uh, March twenty sixth by elections, it, some twenty thousand civilians were killed by the military yes. during the Kukaundi era. Yes, true. But uh, over the years, we have seen Zanu PF maintaining uh, dominance in especially the rural constituencies within Matawe and North Matawe and South, uh, probably in Midlands too. There have been different arguments around it, around the reasons why pe people who, are, who, are, who were victims or are victims would continue to vote for a party which uh, probably killed relatives, maimed, kidnapped and the likes. What, what is your own assessment? It's sad, it's depressing, but it's understandable. Uh, the reflection of the people you go back to 1985, you go back to the 2000 elections. They were a true reflection of what the people think about the current uh, political party, which is ZANU-PF. They voted against it. But because ZANU-PF is now abusing the traditional leadership, uh, people in the villages are intimidated. Those who will, uh, express their independent views, either they will be pretend, they are now up, they are now using a number of uh, the scorched earth police. Uh, those who don't support them, they will be denied food aid. 
uh, there's been a number of drought in the villages. Uh, they use war veterans to intimidate people. So the political space for people to freely express, there's no one who is voting for them by choice, by, by liking. There are very few, and those people who vote for them is because of the handouts that they are getting. So people vote against what they believe in because they, they, they say if we don't vote for them, we'll be beaten, we'll be made to disappear, we'll be denied the food aid. So all those things, because of the, the persistent droughts, are forcing people to, act, to support something that they don't believe in. And then there, there's been a section which is calling for cessation as a possible solution. Yes. Do you think it's a, it's a likely solution to, the, to this challenge? Uh, it's, it's in two ways. It's in two ways. First, before we talk about what those people are saying, right, we have to say what is the drive? What is driving, driven people from 80 to 2010 or so? People have always been do, viewing each other as a nation. But overnight, people no longer are no longer a nation, but they are now a state. Uh, there is no longer, there is no shared, there is no shared uh, uh, nationalism because people feel, especially on this part of the country, they feel marginalized and because of marginalization, either they, it is pushing them out of the country. So I think uh, if we are to look at those who are calling for secession, it is, who is driving that? Is it those who are talking about secession? Or it is the marginalization that those who are saying, no, we can't live in a society where we are being marginalized. So it means that we are not a, a one nation, so we better separate. So that the, the prime drivers of this session are those who are marginalizing people from Matefele. That is what we should be talking about. These ones, they are reacting to what they are experiencing. Because if you had say, for instance, today, Elvis was being buried. Elvis was killed in South Africa. Elvis was a garden boy. You can't have people who move out of their country going to migrating to a foreign land to go and be get banned, to go and be begotten for when their home is normal. So all these things are a symptom of a problem that is in the home. The elephant in the home is the marginalization. People of Matebele are being marginalized. The people of Matebele uh, we are two days away from independence. The Zimbabwe is an independent country, but the people of Zimbabwe are not enjoying the freedoms. Mm -hmm. There is no protection of human rights. So all these, those are the issues that are causing the challenges that we are experiencing. And then uh, lastly, the, 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 the genocide you are talking about okay, between 1983 and 1987, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Why has it taken so long to fix? Uh, it's, it's very simple. Uh, every country that is experienced a genocide, it can easily be resolved if there is a change of government. Here, the prime drivers of the genocide are still the ones who are governing. So for, there is still denial, there is still suppression. All those are the factors that have led us to be where we are today. If you recall some five or so years, uh, to talk about Kukuraon, uh, it will, it will be like you have spoken something uh, that is out of this world. So because of those things, it has taken us all these years, because we are still struggling to say there was the mass killing of people. What do we do as a nation? There are still people who are not yet clear on what must be done. So that's why even after 38 years, there is nothing that has been done. It's because of denialism. Thank you so much uh, for, for having me. Sure.